right, so let's start to figure out how to calculate the correlation coefficient. So when you hear me refer to this phrase, correlation coefficient, we have a letter for it, it's called R. So R is the correlation coefficient. I could ask you directly for the letter R, or I could say find the correlation coefficient, and I'm asking you for the same thing. So let's try and explore what it is and see if we can get some feels for it. So the correlation measures the strength and direction of the linear relationship between two quantitative variables, two numerical variables. Correlation is usually written as R. The correlation R between two numerical variables, X and Y, is this gigantic formula. And this gigantic formula is a good time. So let's just try and look at some of these, these expressions and deconstruct them a bit. So this looks super ugly, I'm not denying it, but this, let's, let's, let's look at this one right here. Okay, we actually came across this expression back in chapter two. This is a deviation. This is saying, take every data value you have and subtract the mean from it. So if we take every x value we have and we subtract the mean, we're finding the deviations for all of our x values. We're finding those deviations and putting them in ratio to the standard deviation for the x values, right? And then we're doing the same thing on the y's. We're multiplying those two for each ordered pair, and then we're adding all the different ordered pairs together and getting an average. And that seems like a lot, and it is. I'm not denying it. But we will use our TI-84 to get this number every time. So we'll use technology to get that number. And again, I get that that number can look scary, but, but really it's, it's taking a bunch of deviations, putting them in ratio to the standard deviation, multiplying a bunch of these for the ordered pairs, adding them all up and getting an average. All right, and, and this is going back to, we have to divide by n minus one in the same way we did it for standard deviation back in chapter two. It has to do with linear independence and bases and degrees of freedom and all sorts of fun stuff. We're not gonna worry about this formula, but I just want you to hear this number, R, it's got a nice formula to it. We're gonna get our number from our calculator. So let's practice this, all right? So are more expensive bike helmets safer than less expensive bike helmets or less expensive ones? The accompanying data on X equaling price and Y equaling quality rating for 12 different brands of bike helmets is given below. Quality rating was a number from zero, the worst possible rating, to 100 and was determined based on factors that included how well the helmet absorbed the force of an impact, the strength of the helmet, ventilation, and ease of use. Use your calculator to make a scatter plot for the data and then does the data look linear? So that's the same type of thing that we did back in example one. But before we even get to that, we're gonna start with our favorite question that I always love to ask us, what is the variable in this problem? And maybe you heard it, or maybe you can actually see in this table of data, we have two numerical variables. So let me just take note of that here. Two numerical variables. Right. We have data on the price of a bike helmet and the quality rating of a bike helmet. So here are our two numerical data variables our two numerical variables, excuse me. I'm gonna push this up just for a moment. There we go. All right, so we've got price and quality rating. Okay. Now, the first part of this says use your calculator to make a scatter plot. Okay, great. Let's review that concept from last time out. So we did the same thing in example one, but let's take a look at it in example two. You always start with data entry. Always start with data entry. I front loaded these in here, all right? So I put all of my X variables in L1 and all of my Y variables in L2. I could not recommend more that you check that you have the same number of observations in L1 as L2, that each X value has a coordinated Y value or a matching Y value. If they're ever different, like for example, if I had 12 data values here and only 11 here, your calculator is gonna pump back an error. All right, after you do data entry, the next thing is always to go set up your stat plots. 
And if you're in chapter 12, which you are, you have two numerical variables, you're automatically in chapter 12, it's going to be a scatter plot. And I have L1 against L2 because that's our basic graph that we're going to make for this entire chapter. I'm going to hit zoom 9 and there it is. All right, so in terms of answering this question, does this scatter plot look linear? Does that look like a line to you? All right, and I would say not really. This looks like it's a pretty messy graph, right? And that happens. Welcome to the real world. It happens. And I want you to remember we have price along the x-axis here, right? And quality rating along the y-axis here, right? And I can see a slight positive relationship. Like if I had to put a line over it, it would look something like that. So I would say there is a slight positive relationship. It's not as strong as the one we saw in example one, which is fine. Not everything is a strong relationship, but I, I want you to see there is a slight positive relationship. It does look for, for a few of these data values, right? As price increases, it seems like the general trend of quality rating is to increase. So let's write that down. All right, so I would say the scatter plot is barely lim linear. So what I mean by that is in this case, there is a slight positive relationship. So slightly positive. Now, if I scooch down just a little bit more, you're gonna see the second part of this question come up and it's gonna say calculate R. And in a moment, I'm gonna flip over to my computer and I'm gonna show you how to calculate R. But I just wanna talk a little bit about what R is going to represent for this problem. What R is gonna tell us in a moment is it's gonna tell us how strong this linear relationship is and the direction of this linear relationship. And when I say strong, when we go back to this, right, we said, this graph, it wasn't that strong in terms of a linear relationship because that doesn't really look like a line. In terms of the direction, we committed already. We said if it was gonna be a line, there was a positive relationship, all right? And what R is going to do is it's going to quantify that strength and that direction for us. And we'll talk about the properties of R when we get to the next page. But right now I'm gonna flip over to my calculator and show you how we get R from our calculator, right? So I wanna make sure we know how to get this number using our calculator instead of the formula. All right, so I'll be right back. Hey Math 43, so I'm here to show you how to um, make a scatter plot. We're gonna run through what we just did in example one and then I wanna calculate R down here. Let's calculate that correlation coefficient. So again, let's just load our data into our calculators we're always gonna get in the habit of putting our explanatory variable into L1 and our response variable into L2. So as you can see, I've already got that ready to go. All right, there's my data. I don't even need to change my stat plots because when we take a look at what we did from example one, it's all set, right? I've got my scatter plot L1 against L2. So let's hit zoom nine and take a look. And that, that kind of looks messy. Um, which is fine, welcome to the real world. Not everything looks nice and clean. When I say mess, it just, it doesn't really look like there's much of a pattern. If I look here, now keep in mind, our explanatory variable was price and our response variable was quality rating. So as price increases, okay, does the quality rating increase? Maybe a little. If I try to do a general trend, you can see my, my little cursor moving in a positive direction, right? Because that would be a positively sloped line. So that looks positive, all right? But it doesn't look that great. So in terms of does the scatter plot look linear? No, it doesn't. I see a slight positive relationship. So when I get asked down here, calculate R, R is gonna tell me how strong that relationship is, that, excuse me, how strong that linear relationship is. And if I look at it, that does not look very strong, okay? So let's just go through the mechanics of how we calculate R, and then we'll explain a little bit more what it means in, in, in when we get to the next page. All right, so in order to calculate R, 
there's something we all have to do before we get going. We have to turn our diagnostics on. And they don't come on. I don't know why TI-84 doesn't default them on, but they don't. So here's what we need to do. We need to go into our catalog here. Now you see catalogs written in blue. So I'm gonna hit second and the zero key. And then we have to scroll down till we see something called diagnostics on. So I gotta scroll down for a while. And I don't know how long it'll take in here. Okay, here we go. I gotta find diagnostics on. Wait for it. it. Should be coming. There, they're off. Okay, diagnostics on. So it looks like I had to scroll down, I don't know, what does that say? 33 times, something like that. Okay, so go ahead and hit enter once you get here, and then hit enter again. Okay, so we just need to turn our diagnostics on. If you have a newer operating system, which my, my physical calculator does not, but this one, this one I bought, this this computer emulator does. So if you have the newer operating system, if you hit mode and you scroll down here, you can turn your stat diagnostics, do you see they're on right now? So you could toggle them on and off. We just turn them on, so leave them on. And this should be a one-time thing. Once you do it, you should be good to go. All right, so once you've got them on, go back to your home screen. Okay, let me clear this out. So we're gonna learn about a new part of our, our calculator, a new function in our calculator. And with this new function, you can either give your calculator two options or three options. And so for this example, we're just gonna do two. When we get moving on in this chapter, we're always gonna give it three. And once we give it the three options, always give it the three options. So this is just the warm up with two. All right, so let's hit stat. We're gonna go over to calc. All right, so chapter 12 is called regression analysis, or it's not called regression analysis. I don't remember the exact title of the chapter. Oh, it's called linear regression and correlation. I just cheated and looked at the title, um, but regression. Regression means we're taking data, we're taking scatter plots, and we're trying to map a math function onto it. And we're gonna do a lot of linear regression in here. We're gonna map lines, okay? Now, if you look in this calc menu, we've done one of our stats, okay? I want you to start looking at the REGs, right? There's a bunch of regressions in here. There's a linear regression, there's a quadratic, a cubic, a quartic. You see this down arrow key? There's quite a few regressions, and I'm gonna scroll down till we get a better view of the regressions. Oops, let me scroll back up. This has got a slight delay on it. Do one more, there we go. So you can see there's a bunch of regressions on here. And depending how far you've gotten in your math um, classes, you might have heard of these functions, all right? Quadratic, I think most of us have heard of the parabola. Yeah, cubic, It's it's got two little bumps to it. I don't know if I'm air drawing it very well here. All right, quartic. There's the linear, there's the second linear, okay? There's natural log regression. So just take note that the I is missing here. That, that does make a difference. This is exponential. We could scroll down some more. Give me a moment. There's a slight delay on this. There we go. Power regression, logistic regression, sinusoidal. You could make your own. And for the most part in this class, we're really gonna stick with option eight. We're gonna be with linear regression. And let me compare eight and four for you, just for a moment. Let me go one more up. Okay, so if you look at eight and four, they both say linear regression, and it's just a matter of what they call the slope and what they call the y-intercept. That's the difference here. So I think back in your math classes, you were probably familiar with the um, slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. And that's the one that option four looks similar to. They're saying ax plus b, instead of mx plus b, but it's still just letters. So over here, a is the slope and b is the y-intercept. Great, that's for math, all right? In stats, we actually go the other way. We call a the y-intercept and b the slope. And that has to do with something called multiple regression. We're not gonna get to it in this class, but this is the stats version of linear regression. So a is the y-intercept, b is the slope, and none of that, is gonna have any effect on R just yet, all right? I just want you to hear kind of where we're going when we start doing this. All right, but to find R, okay, let's go down to eight, okay? And let me see how much delay I have. There we go, eight. Okay, so again, we're gonna feed our calculator two things. 
When we really get going with linear regression, we're going to feed it three things, but right now we're going to feed it two. So you need to tell your calculator where your data is located. Ours is in L1 and L2. So let's tell our calculator to look in L1, but we need to separate it with a comma and also tell it to look at L2. So our x variables are in L1, our y variables are in L2. And once you hit enter, a whole bunch of stuff pops back out. And we're going to decipher A and B a little later, all right, the y-intercept and the slope. But we were tasked with finding R, and there's our value of R. So whenever you want to find your correlation coefficient, that's what we want to do. We want to do stat calc 8, all right, and then feed it L1 comma L2. So there are those directions. There's a different YouTube video you could watch from a different teacher just to check it out. All right, I'll see you in just a bit. Bye. All right, so we're back from our calculators. We just found R was 0 0.303. And on the next page, we're gonna get some gut feelings as to what that means in terms of the strength. We already know the direction is positive, but I just wanna remind us that when we're trying to calculate R, it will be the same calculator command always, stat calc 8, L1, L2. And eventually, we're gonna tack on a third item here. We're not there yet, but it's coming. So always put L1 and L2, and then when we pick up that third piece, just get in the habit of making that third piece happen, all right? And it'll be this thing called Y1. In order to see your R, if you're not seeing your R, you have not turned your diagnostics on. So you need to hit second in catalog, which is over the zero key, scroll all the way down until you see the phrase diagnostics on, and hit enter twice. So as long as your diagnostics are on, R will pop up. If your diagnostics are not on, and, and when TI ships their calculators out, by default, the diagnostics are off. So if your diagnostics are off, you will not see R or R squared. You'll only see R, A or B, or A and B. So you make sure your diagnostics are on, and then you can run through this. And there's a YouTube video of a different teacher. If you want to hear a different teacher's voice, click on that link to that YouTube video, and you'll see that teacher finding R and R squared. Okay, so now that we've looked at how to calculate R on our calculator, let's discuss a few of the properties of this number. So for the properties of R, our correlation coefficient, the value of R does not depend on the unit of measurement for either variable. So if, for example, your X variables were some kind of distance, like they were height or something to that effect, and it was in feet, and then you converted it to inches. That, that change in measurement or the unit of measurement does not have any bearing on, on your value of R. The value of R itself has no units. So R, no units to it. The value of R does not depend on which of the variables is considered X. So I know we've been uh, in the first couple of examples putting our X variables in L1 and our Y variables in L2. If you actually switched their places, uh, that would not change the value of R. Uh, this fourth property, linear operations applied to the values of X and Y have no effect on R. We're gonna talk about that a little bit later in example seven in particular, but when you hear this phrase, linear operations, we have four linear operations in math, and they are, let me write this down for you, so in terms of linear operations, The four that we have in math are addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So those are your four basic linear operations. And, and what that is trying to convey here, what this fourth property is trying to convey, is let's say you had a bunch of data values in L1. Um, and I, on the previous example, or at least on example two, we had the price in L1, right? We were looking at price of a bike helmet versus the quality rating of a bike helmet. So what this, this property is trying to imply is let's say you had all those price values in L1 and you multiplied those by three for whatever reason, I don't know, you wanna triple the price, that would not change the value of R. Or let's say you had all of those quality ratings for the bike helmets in L2 and you added seven to all of them for whatever reason, that would not change the value of R. 
So you can perform any of these linear operations to your data values in X and Y, and it doesn't change R. And if you're wondering, well, what would a nonlinear relationship or a nonlinear operation be? Um, the most common ones that you're, the, the ones that you're probably familiar with are, like if I square rooted every value in L1, or I cubed every value in L2, those are nonlinear operations. But the four basic linear ones we have are addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. In terms of R, even though it has no units, the way it's constructed with that, that ugly formula we saw on the previous page, every R that you're ever given will be a number between negative one and one. All right, so it's somewhere in the spectrum between negative one and one. And if we start to split this up, you can see that on the positive side, any R value between 0.8 and one is considered strong. Any R value, oh, I'm gonna sneeze. Excuse me. Any R value between 0.5 and 0.8 is considered moderate. And any R value between 0 and 0.5 is considered weak. And this is again on the positive side of the R values. On the negative side, anything between negative 0.5 and 0 is considered weak. Anything between negative 0.8 and negative 0.5 is moderate. And anything between negative 1 and negative 0.8 is strong. So you can have strong in either direction, the positive or negative direction. You can have moderate in either direction, the positive or negative direction, and you can have weak in the either direction, positive or negative. Just depends on the relationship of your data. Um, the correlation coefficient R is one only when all points in the scatter plot of the data lie exactly on a straight line that slopes upward. All right, so if we have an exact straight line and all the data points are exactly along it, a line, ugh, exactly along that line, then we will say R is exactly one, okay? And I'm gonna tell you, in the real world, that just doesn't happen. Um, similarly, R is negative one only when all of the points lie exactly on a downward sloping line. So if I had all of my scatter plot values, my data points here, 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 exactly on this line, and it happened to have a negative slope, then R would exactly equal negative one. And again, that doesn't happen, but I just want you to see, that's how you get to the end points of this. All the points are on a negatively sloping line, R is negative one. All the points are on a positively sloping line, R is positive one. Um, the value of R is a measure to the extent of which X and Y are linearly related. And for this class, we're really only gonna stay with linear regression. We'll kind of hint at quadratic regression and other regressions beyond this, but we're gonna stick to the line. And when you stick to the line, we usually quote R. And when you move beyond the line, when you move to quadratic, when you move to cubic, sinusoidal, exponential, logarithmic, we tend to quote R squared. So I'm gonna give you both interpretations, one for R in this chapter and one for R squared. And in linear, you can use either. You can use R or R squared. And when we move beyond linear, you can only use R squared. R only goes for linear relationships, and R squared is more universal. All right, there will be four numbers that you have to interpret or four statistics you have to interpret in this chapter, and here is your first one. So when interpreting R, there are three qualifiers you must always mention. You need to tell me whether R is positive or negative. Always use the word linear, and tell me how strong it is. And your options here are weak, moderate, or strong. Okay. So I'll want these three adjectives. I don't care in which order. You can say negative linear weak. You can say weak linear positive, whatever order you want, but I want to see all three of them. And then I want context. And when I say context, I mean mention your two numerical variables. Okay. So I'm gonna flip over to my computer for a moment. We're gonna check out this website and it's gonna give us a better idea of what these numbers are representing. Like how can we connect the graph of a scatter plot to the strength and direction of our R value? All right, I'll catch you in just a moment. Hey Math 43, I just wanted us to look at this wicked cool website together so we could get some some more understanding about what this R, what this correlation coefficient is. So we've talked about now how there's this scale, every R value you're ever given will be a number between negative one and one. And anything on the positive side means you have a positively sloped linear relationship, 
And then thing on the negative side means you have a negatively sloped linear relationship. But I, I really want to try and hone in on what it means for R to be strong, whether it's positive or negative, what it means for R to be weak, whether it's positive or negative, and what that might look like on a graph. So I clicked on this link and it takes me to this website. So we're going to try and piece together some, some correlation coefficients with some, some graphs, some scatter plots. So here's how this is. You've got four scatter plots here and you've got four correlations for R values. And we've got to match the correlations to the scatter plots. Or you could say you got to match the scatter plots to the correlations. So let's see if we can pick these apart. If I look at the, the numbers, they gave me positive 0 0.80, negative 0.53, negative 0.78, and negative 0.95. So right out the gate, what I notice is I have one positive correlation and three negative correlations. So on my graphs, my scatter plots, I want to look for the positively sloped linear relationship. And I can see that here. It's in the upper left. So this one has to be 0.8. There's no other way it could be anything other than that. Okay. And then I have these three negative correlations, or these three negatively sloped scatter plots. And the deal is, if you look at this, negative 0.53 in comparison to negative 0.58 and negative 0.95, yes, they're all negative, but their strengths are different. All right, negative 0.53, it is slightly over here in the moderate uh, negative side, but it's bordering on weak, because it was pretty close to negative 0.5. We're at negative 0.78. It's still in the moderate range, but you can see it eking towards the strong, right? And negative 0.95 is really strong. So weak, moderate, kind of moderate, strong, and strong. So let's look at these three graphs, and let's start with the strongest. Which one looks most like a line? This one, right? This is the one that has the least scatter to it. So if that's the strongest negative relationship, it needs to have the strongest negative correlation, right? And then if we look, if I have to compare upper right to bottom left or lower left, this looks more of a mess to me, right? That looks a lot messier. I can kind of see the line here. So this bottom left one is the stronger relationship. And between these two negative numbers, the one closer to negative one is the stronger relationship. So that means the bottom left has got to be negative 0.78 which means the top right would be negative 0.53. Now I can check my answers. Let's see what we got. Hopefully we get four green happy faces or creepy happy faces. I always think they look a little weird, but let's try this again. All right, and that one, I knew I was going to have a relatively easy time because it says for all the folks that have played this, historically, there's only been a 9% chance of error. All right, so let's take a look at this one. This one's a little bit tougher, right? We see historical chance of error, 24%. All right, so if I look at this, I see two positives, two negatives. All right, so let me find my positives. So I can see my positive scatter plots over here, my positively related scatter plots on the left side, and I see my negatively related scatter plots on the right. Okay, so between 0.93 and 0.78, 0.93 is definitely the stronger number. So if I look, if I'm comparing these two here, this one looks more linear to me. So I'm going to put that at 0.93. All right, this one looks weaker. I'm going to put that at 0.78. All right, now this will be fun. So we need to look at these two and figure out which one looks stronger, which one looks more like a line. So to me, the top right one looks more linear, just because I can see like there's a point out here that's a little far out. These just feel a little bit more spread out, a little bit weaker. So in terms of which of these correlations is stronger, negative 0.8 is stronger. Yes, it's the lower number, but it's closer to negative one, which actually makes it stronger. And then I'm gonna put negative 0.7 here. So that, that's what I'm going with. If you disagree with me, no problem. We're about to find out if I'm right or wrong. Sweet, got it right. Let's keep going. All right, what do we got? Okay, we're getting, ooh, 32% chance. All right, we're gonna test me here. Oh, and they're all negative, yikes. Okay, here we go. So this is gonna be negative 0.10, the weakest, still pretty weak, still pretty weak, and still pretty weak. Whew, okay. So if I, no wonder this one, this one's tough. All right, to me, this one looks awful, right? Negative 0.10, I feel like that is the most spread out. Although that one's looking pretty bad too. So I'm gonna try here and here for the two weakest. Well, that's, that's pretty tough. I'm not really sure, but we're gonna find out. That's why the historical chance of error is 32%. All right, in terms of these two, 
I, they're both bad. They're both weak or moderate. This one's a little moderate. This one I can see that there's kind of a line forming, so I'll give that the negative 0.55 and here the negative 0.43. So I'm about to check my answers, and I'm feeling pretty good about these top two, but this is kind of a wash. This is this is really hard for me to, to decipher because that I could see that being just totally weak or that one totally weak. I almost feel like I want to switch it because I feel like I could practically draw a circle around these and this I could kind of see the line. Okay, I'm going to switch it. All right, we're going to find out. All right, but this one, this is why I, I, I don't know. Okay, here we go. Ooh, good thing I switched. Okay, uh, see, I get pumped when I, I get them right. Okay, but and again, the reason I switched it is because this is practically a circle. If you can ever make a circle, it's got a correlation of zero. And this, I could sort of see a line. But again, that one was tough. So I understand why there's this historical chance of error of 32%. All right, let's see what we get next. Oh, 30%. We're still having a tough one. Okay, so we can do this. Oh, good. They're all negative again. Um, and this is going to be the toughest one. I can see I trying to figure out negative 0.7 to negative 0.78. That's going to be the toughest one. So I think I can pop, spot the negative 0.09 and the negative 0.98. I can see that here, right? That's definitely strongest. Negative 0.09. That's almost a circle. There we go. Okay, now, between the two of these, we have to figure out which one looks more like a line. I'm feeling like this one looks more like a line, but man, they're close. This is why people have trouble with this. All right, so why don't we put this one at negative 0.7 and this one at negative 0.78? But again, I'm not confident. It's really hard just by eye, uh, with your eyes, just to figure out the difference between negative 0.7 and negative 0.78. So we'll see. I don't know. Do you feel like that one's a little bit better? These, these points over here are pretty wide, but then these points are wide. All right, we're going to try it. Oh, I did get it. Okay, great. Great. All right, we're going to do one more. Okay, 16% chance of error. I should be okay. Oh, I don't want to jinx myself. We're going to hope I'm okay. All right, so if I look at this, three are negative, one is positive. Okay, here's the positive plot. So I know that's going to be 0.61. And then I got to decipher between how strong these are. So again, even though negative 0.78 is the largest number there, it's the weakest relationship because it's furthest from negative one. And then we get a little bit stronger with negative 0.88 and a little bit stronger with negative 0.97. So if I'm looking at these, um, I think this is the strongest negative relationship, okay? So between these two, I feel like the bottom right is stronger, so I'll go negative 0.88 here and negative 0.78 here. So I'm feeling pretty good about that one. Let's see what we get, okay? All right, do I dare do this one more time? Ugh, I'm kind of tempted, but I'm gonna call it so it looks like I'm doing awesome with my streak of 100%. You can, if you want, you can create a group, play with other people, see how they're doing. Like I said, it's more fun to complete, but I hope with that, that gives you a better idea or just a better context as to how we can connect this number R with our scatter plot. All right, see ya. Okay, now that we've got some some idea of what this R actually represents, let's go ahead and go ahead and interpret the R we found in example two. So when we found R for that bike helmet data, we found that R was 0.303 in terms of interpreting R, all right, you owe me three adjectives and some context. Okay, and there will ultimately be four numbers that you need to interpret inside of chapter 12. R is the first of those four. So you need to tell me whether R is positive or negative. You need to use the word linear, and then you need to tell me how strong it is. So for right now, we can see R is positive. So for this example, I'm gonna use positive. You're always gonna use linear. And in terms of strength, go figure out where it is on this spectrum. So 0.303 is right in here. It's in the weak area. So for this problem, I'm gonna go weak. And I would say if we looked at that scatter plot, it does look weak. That does not look like a linear relationship. That's pretty weak. It's not quite a circle. When I say circle, when you can completely make a circle around your data, that's an R of zero, but it's not good. So those are the three adjectives I'll be looking for. And then I need context. What were your two numerical variables? So I would say there is A, and we can go in any order. You can say positive linear weak. You can say positive weak linear. 
leak pos leak excuse me linear weak positive i don't care what order just pick one so i'm going to say there i'll go this way there is a weak positive linear relationship between and our two variables were price and quality ratings for bike helmets. So between the price and quality rating of a bike helmet. Okay. So that was that. That's how we would interpret an R. And like I said, that's one of the four numbers that you'll need to be able to interpret in this chapter.